Welcome to the rocket profile of the Energia rocket, the Soviet Union's first successful super heavy lift launcher. Energia was built as a response to the SDS shuttle, the next leap in space technology launched by NASA after the wind down of the Saturn program. Energia is depicted here with the Soviet shuttle, the Buran, but unlike STS, the lifter was designed from the start to be able to handle other non-Buran payloads, which is why the main engines are not on the Buran, but rather at the bottom of the main tank. The downside of this arrangement is that it's very difficult to recover the RD-0120 main engines on the Energia, whereas the RD-25s on the shuttle were recovered at the end of every successful mission. Another change from the STS system was that the boosters featured the most powerful liquid engines ever flown, the RD-170s, rather than solid fuel boosters. The four boosters provided up to 8,180 kilonewtons of thrust, burning kerosene and oxygen for between 2 minutes and 20 seconds and 2 minutes and 30 seconds with a vacuum specific impulse of 338 seconds. A high specific impulse of the boosters meant that energy had a higher payload capacity than the STS stack and was really overpowered to lift the Buran, even with the Buran's payload of 30 tons, which exceeded the shuttle's 25 ton capacity. Theoretically, the use of liquid engines was safer than the use of solids, though the RD-170s had their share of issues on the Zenit rocket. The reason solids were used on STS, however, was cost and without funding to develop a way to recover the Energia boosters, the Energia system's use of the highly advanced RD-170s was likely very expensive. The core engines of the Energia were four RD-0120s burning hydrogen and oxygen for up to 8 minutes and 20 seconds, providing 1,961.3 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust each at a specific impulse of 455 seconds. The RD-0120s were roughly comparable to the RD-25s on the shuttle, uh, so having four of them instead of three while lifting a lighter shuttle marked this system as designed for greater things than just lifting Buran. Again though, this added cost. The Energia stopped short of orbit to ensure its own disposal, leaving the Buran to complete orbit with its own RD-58S orbital maneuvering engines. Unlike the regular RD-58s, these S variants used the more expensive Sinton kerosene in place of RG-1 kerosene. The RCS thrusters on Buran also used Sinton, but combined it with gaseous oxygen rather than liquid oxygen to avoid putting cryogenic tanks all over Buran and facilitate the pressure feed system. Buran had obvious advantages over the space shuttle, learning from the space shuttle's mistakes. It was more efficient, had greater capability, and was more flexible with an automated option, and could be argued as safer. But the reason why STS didn't use liquid boosters, the origin of Energia's primary advantage, was cost. And ultimately, it was cost that limited Energia to two flights, one with Buran automated, and one with the Polyak cargo pod. The purpose of the shuttle system, of course, was reusability, and the Energia system also made it more difficult to reuse the engines. On that note, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the Energia rocket.